Director Martin Scorsese's illustrious career includes some of the greatest movies of the last half century, and he has an Oscar to prove that. But he has another legacy that's almost equally important, as Ben Tracy explains. <laughs> Martin Scorsese's meticulous and unsparing approach to filmmaking If we wanted something, we just took it. has made him one of the most acclaimed directors of all time. You can see the difference clearly here. And in one his New York screening Zanty room, it was quite that, clear uh, that he's not just uh, he's passionate about movie making, with, uh, but also um, movie caretaking. Here, you see it there. Now it suddenly comes to life. It's like having a cataract removed yeah, or something exactly, like that. which I've had done. <laughs> <laughs> It's a restored version of 1955's East of Eden, starring James Dean. The actors come to life mm -hmm. when their faces can be really perceived properly. And if you look like James Dean, you want to see your face. This is just one of the more than 950 films restored with the support of the Film Foundation, which has been essential to preserving cinematic history. It partners with studios and archives to ensure that everything from classic foreign films to Marilyn Monroe's final performance once again look like they did when they were first shot. The foundation was started by Scorsese in 1990 with a little help from his friends. Spielberg, Francis Coppola, we got Stanley Kubrick, but the key figure was uh, George Lucas. Like the plot of many a Tinseltown thriller, Scorsese and his fellow directors realized the threat to the film industry was coming from inside the house. It was film itself. The earliest stock, nitrate film, was highly flammable and could decompose with age. That's a big reason why up to 75% of all silent films have been lost. Its successor, acetate film, was safer but had its own issues. And like many a career in Hollywood, it lacked staying power. By the early 70s, it was decreed that every film had to be made in color. And just at that point in which color became so important, well, the negative stock became weaker, and within six years, whatever prints we could find were faded. And it just seemed crazy. I had to do everything in color, and now the color doesn't, doesn't last. Not, not only doesn't last after 20 years, six years? Oh, come on. Scorsese's fear of fading color was partly why he shot his now classic 1980 film Raging Bull in black and white. A left and a right to the head, a hard left head of the body, and Robinson is driven out of the ring. That same year, he fired off an urgent letter to filmmakers saying, everything we're doing right now means absolutely nothing. It was an angry letter. Uh, it was kind of, um, I guess, uh, overly enthusiastic. And, uh, but I wanted to get the attention. You were basically putting folks on notice. We got a problem. Yeah, here. we got a real problem here. And what we should do is force them to deal with this. Scorsese led a campaign to convince Eastman Kodak to develop a more stable film stock and then focused on the studios, worried Hollywood's history was vanishing. The most important thing was being overlooked and those were the films in their vaults. Saving them wasn't necessarily the biggest priority. Andrea Callis oversees the archive at Paramount Pictures, our sister company. In the early 80s, Scorsese presented the major studios with detailed lists of the films they should preserve. His encyclopedic knowledge of film is literally unparalleled. Have you seen the Paramount list? I have, yeah. It's amazing that he was able to do that, right? To just sit down with the incredible output of every studio and just go, yep, no, yep, no, yep, no. It's an important list, and it's one that's shared with us that helps guide our preservation program, um, among other things. Callis was brought on to expand Paramount's preservation effort. They've now restored more than 1,500 films, stored at 28 degrees in this state-of-the-art vault. These films are the source material for each new technology that's come along, from DVDs to 4K streaming. And that's nice. You're seeing a lot more detail in that. Even movies you might not consider that old, such as 1986's Ferris Bueller's Day Off, already need some work. I recall a circle park in fall. <laughs>
Paramount recently partnered with the Film Foundation to present some of the restored films from its library. Callis says the Foundation has been essential in making sure Hollywood preserves its film past. We always have before and afters in restorations. You know, it looked like crap and now it looks great. Same thing with film preservation. Before the Film Foundation and after is really dramatic. It's been that impactful. It's that impactful, absolutely. Footloose, mm -hmm. Saving Private Ryan. The Film Foundation also works with institutions like the Film Archive at the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences, the folks that hand out the Oscars. The Academy wanted to put its skin into the game to be a part of that movement to start taking care of films in need of restoration. Mike Pogorzelski is director of the archive. The image is literally just melted oh, away. Wow, yeah, it's just gone. Even he says film preservation is not just about caring for Oscar winners, but lesser known films too, including the 1943 film, The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, a Technicolor Marvel and Scorsese favorite. Then Mr. Candy, you are Livingston, I presume. <laughs> Restoring it, was a labor of love. It, extremely complicated <laughs> because of the fact that there was actually mold spores growing on the film itself, an absolutely monumental task that no archive could have taken on by itself without the Film Foundation's support. One of the Academy Archive's longest running projects was a digital restoration with a Criterion collection of acclaimed Indian filmmaker Satyajit Rai's Apu Trilogy. Its negatives were severely damaged in a nitrate fire. The preservation effort moved from taking care of these deteriorating originals to suddenly scouring the world looking for any surviving film elements so that they could basically be pieced together almost like a jigsaw puzzle. In a lot of ways the Apu Trilogy looks better in the 2000s than it did in the 1950s when the films were brand new. What is it like when you sit in a screening room and you see one of these fully restored? It is uh, an amazing experience. Being able to carry movies like this into the future is one of the greatest and most meaningful parts of what we do here. This is an Italian poster of the, the first movie I can remember seeing by title. And Martin Scorsese, who has been called the patron saint of film preservation, is likely to be remembered not only for the films he's made, but also for the many he's helped save. How important is this part of your legacy to you? I always thought it was more important. I guess I was more of a teacher than a filmmaker. Hmm. I particularly enjoy younger people seeing these films and whether their reaction is, I, I reject it completely, I hate it, or they become inspired and make some beautiful works of art that enrich the lives of the whole world. This is what we're here for, to enrich each other's lives through art.